Uh, hey, it is um, Mrs. Bopinick, obviously. This is lesson seven, I believe, factoring trinomials. Let's go for it. So like we did with the difference of squares or other ways to factor um, polynomials and trinomials and other things that are strung together. Uh, we're going to work backwards a little bit. So we are going to start today by simplifying these polynomials. So we are going to FOIL this out. So again, we're just going to make sure we multiply all the terms together. We're going to distribute the terms together. So what we're doing here is we're just trying to prove um, about one way to factor a trinomial. There are different ways to factor trinomials, and this is just one of them. Uh, so here we go. So if I multiply these two binomials together, I should get x squared, and then I should get 5x, and then I should get 1x, I'm adding. And last terms, I'm going to add a 5. And as we know, because we are getting hang of this, I can um, combine these terms. So I'm going to end up with x squared plus 6x plus 5. Do the same thing here. And then I end up with m squared plus 6m minus 4m minus 24. I'm going to combine these like terms, so I'm going to end up with m squared plus 2m minus 24. And now I have the same thing here. I'm going to have k squared minus 3k minus 7k. And hopefully that would make sense that I, if I'm subtracting, a constant from a variable in both of these um, binomials, I'm going to end up with two negative signs, so that should make sense there. And then I'm going to end up with 7 times 7 is 21. 7 times 3 is 21. I'm going to end up here. minus 10k and then plus 21k. So what this says here is trinomials like these, these are all trinomials, can be factored back into these, if you think about it. Meaning I can deconstruct these and try to work backwards. So if I'm asked like on a test, like, hey, here is this beautiful trinomial, a quadratic trinomial. Hey, what, um, when you multiply stuff together, what could you multiply together to get this trinomial? So that's one of our goals with this lesson is to think about how to deconstruct these. So to factor a trinomial, there is a form, because you know in math there are lots of forms, um, and this is, this should look familiar, x squared plus bx plus c. So if I take this form, for example, and I just go up to this top one, x squared plus 6x, well, 6 is the b, 5 is the c, right? So these are just, the b and c are just trying to tell me what's attached to the other variable. And then here's the constant, c for constant. So here's the deal, you have to find two integers, so integer is a fancy word for like a number, that, if you think about it, that add together, that add to become b. Well, you also, that's one constraint, if you think about it that way, but you also have to find two integers that when you multiply them together, you would get so if I look back at this first example, so again, I'm looking for two numbers that add to 6. Well, I could start listing all of the numbers that add to 6, but maybe I should start with 5. Because 5 is prime, and if I think back to prime factorization, 
if I think back to what are the factors of five, well, if it's a prime number, then it's only gonna be five and one, right? So, and if I add five and one together, would I get six? Well, yes, I would. And that becomes my two factors from over here. Same thing over here. If I think about my factors of 24, for example, I could start listing all of my factors and my factor pairs. Um, and I could think about, well, I do know six times four is 24. Oh, and then the difference of six and four is two. So maybe I can play around with the, like what's positive and what's negative. Okay, so that might work there. So this is a little bit of a trial and error and play around and get, again, you can get a little bit creative. So if I go down to a guided example, so I have um, what two integers have a product. So again, just revisiting this, a product of 12 and a sum of seven. Well, you e might even want to list some factors. Like I always like to do like this. Example. Uh, I can start listing my factor pairs of 12. So again, I want to have a product of 12. So this is when I multiply two numbers. Uh, a times B, if you think about it, equals 12. Well, what are my factors of 12? Uh, so I can do 1 and 12. I could do 2 and 6. I could write 3 and 4, and I'm done. Now you should be able to kind of see pretty quickly that I have a 3 and a 4, right? That uh, if I add them together, they're going to get 7. So I have 3 plus 4, okay? So there are my magic numbers. So I can go ahead and write, well, that's what they kind of have in common. So three and four, I'm gonna play around with those factors. Now it says I can write the two binomials using these integers. Okay, so let's think about that. If I have three and four, um, let's see, they're all positive signs. So I think I'm just gonna add these. I don't think the negatives are gonna come into play here. So let's just try it. Well, can I say, well, x plus three and x plus four. Should we try that out? Let's try it out. Now I'm going to distribute to check, see if I am onto something here. So x times x is x squared. x times four is four x. x times three, three x. And then four times three, Combine x squared plus 7x plus 12. And then check, because it results from that. Yay. Okay. Now, and this does take practice. You could do these for years and get really good at them. So let's go for set one. Okay. So here we go. So I have to think about 20. So I'm just gonna list 20, okay? And I'm just gonna start listing some of the numbers that when I multiply them together, I get 20. I'm gonna go down my list, two and 10. I'm gonna use three, no, four times five, and then five, six, seven, eight. Okay, these are the factors of 20. And then if I think about nine, do any of these numbers, when you add them together, I get Nine, well, I think four and five is my winner. Chicken, chicken dinner, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, and then these are both positive signs, so I think that this is pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna say n plus four, n plus five. And again, I could check it. n squared, four n, five n, four times five is 20. Like, that works. Okay, now let's go to this. So I, I noticed that I have two positive signs here. I have 18, I have nine. It's gonna be pretty friendly here. So I'm gonna start listing my factors of 18. I have 118, I have two, I have nine. So it's three, mm, I think that three times six, that's gonna work. Four, no, five, six, and then I'm done. Because then I'm going up and over because these are getting bigger. So I'm done with my factors of 18. Uh, and then I, hopefully you realize pretty quickly that nine, that six plus three equals nine, that's my winner. They're both addition signs, so I'm just strictly, simply or strictly going to add both of the factors together. Voila. 3x, 6x, 18, 3 and 6. Yep, that's going to work out. Great. Let's go here. I have two addition signs here, so 
Again, pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and list my factors of 24. 1 and 24, no, 2 and 12. Oh, I already have an answer, I think. Or do I, right? That could work, but then that would be a subtraction, so forget about that. Does 3 go? Yeah, 3 and 8 do. Let's just list them all. Maybe 4 and 6. Oh, if I add 4 and 6, I'm going to get 10. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. 10. Uh, so then it, and there are all addition signs, so I'm just going to simply add those together. Okay. One more. Let's do it. Well, this is kind of interesting because I have one. Factors of one. Well, um, I'm going to list all the factors. There are a lot. That's what it is. Those are the factors of one. Is one plus one two? Yeah, it is. So y plus one, y plus one. Okay. I could also rewrite that. Hopefully you might even recognize that this is also the same thing as that. Set two, I'm gonna do actually all four of these because now we have some subtraction signs. It might get a little more complicated. So now I have to think of 18. And notice it's negative. Okay, well let's start playing around, I guess, first with the numbers. We're still gonna list the factors. So one and 18, that's not gonna help. Two, I think two times nine is 18. No, 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 that's not gonna help. Well, three and six. Oh, there's something interesting here, but if I add three and six, like up here, I would get nine. What if I subtract them though? Oh yeah, and then that, so maybe the factors themselves, if you think about it, maybe it is like that. Would that work? Meaning is six plus negative three or negative three plus six, three. Yes. And then six times three is 18, but I have a negative. So, oh, that, I think that's going to work. So I think that what I should do is n plus six and then n minus three. n squared, six n, three n with a negative sign and negative 18. Check. That's going to work. Let's do this one now. So I'm going to list side eight. But remember, it's negative, so maybe I should just be clear here. That's negative now. I'm still going to list my factors, not as many. And what I'm looking for is a, is a difference, or, or you combine them to get two. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to have the difference here. So I have to manipulate this to make sure I get a difference. And it's a, the positive side wins, so it's going to be a positive four and a negative two you think about it that way, right? Okay, so then I should be able to write x plus four and then x minus two. Let's keep going a little bit. Oh, I think I already am seeing something here. So I have negative six. Let's list, I have one and six. I don't know which one's gonna be negative, although that's gonna work. And then I have two times three. And I'm looking for the difference of one, so I think I already have my winner. And that's a positive sign, so it's going to be a positive three. So I'm gonna add that, I'm at a negative two, I'm combining these terms, chicken, chicken dinner, whatever. So I'm gonna have g plus three and g minus two. 45, and I'm gonna end up with four somehow. So 45, it's gonna be a negative though. So I'm gonna have one at 45, it's not even, that's not gonna work, I'm gonna three, I'm gonna think about four, no, I'll go four different ways, right? five and nine. Oh, I'm already seeing it. So I have, and which side's gonna win? Well, if this, this middle term is a positive, then the positive side should be bigger. Okay, so I'm gonna have C plus nine, C, so um, that is, those are the class notes for today. If I then look at the next set, well, these are all, oh, this is kind of interesting because it looks a little different. Hopefully you can see that now. Because set three, what do you notice about set, step three? Set three is that these are all subtraction signs. 
so I'm just gonna make myself a note that they, this is like a new practice because it's, all these terms are being subtracted. So maybe I'll notice something else. Okay, we'll do a couple here. So I'm still gonna do the same thing. So I have negative three is my um, target. Well, I just think one times three, it's prime. So it's just gonna be one times three. I'm gonna have to think about what side is going to win to get me negative two. Well, I'm gonna have to do something a little bit because negative three plus one is negative two. So that's gonna work out. So I'm gonna go like this. Okay, 30, it's negative. Let's see, I'm gonna go my one and 30, two and 15, three and 10. Oh, I think I already got it, because three, there's a relationship between three, 10, and seven. Okay, so now I have to think, well, which side wins? I have to get a negative seven, so I think that means I'm gonna have a negative 10 that's gonna win, and then a positive three. Okay, let's do it. So I'm gonna have x minus 10 and x. Go down to 13. 24, this is now positive. This seems to be maybe a mix of adding and subtracting and positives and negatives, right? Okay, so let's just see if things change here a little bit. So if I think about my factors of 24, one and 24, I've got two and 12, I've got three and eight. Oh, and then I'm adding three and eight, right? get negative 11, but they're both going to be negative. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's awesome. Okay, let's go for it. So then I should have x, we should both be subtraction signs, x minus 3. Let's do one more. Oh, why I think I already know, because 49 is a beautiful square number, and I could list 1 and 49, but 7 and 7 I know are 14, and if I add these together to get a negative inner term or that linear term, then they both have to be negative. So this is going to end up being x minus 7, x minus 7, which yields in this thing squared, right? Okay, mixed practice. Should we do one? Maybe we'll do... Uh, oh, no. Let's not do the mixed practice. Let's go down. Hopefully you can see that. Oh, this is a this is some really good stuff. We have <laughs> now we're looking for a GCF, a grace common factor, and we're factoring. So I have to think about what number goes into, or even a variable goes into all terms, and then I have to take it a step further and try to do um, factor out the remaining. So this is like a double factor factoring, maybe I'll call it bonanza. Okay, so we're extracting. Let's extract first. If I look at all of these terms, I know, oh, I'm already seeing it. I think four goes into four, four goes into 12, four goes into eight. What if I just pick four then? I remember I'm, when I pull out a, extract a factor, I like to put it over to kind of turn it into a division problem. So I'm going to extract my four. I'm going to put my four outside. And then I'm going to end up with another trinomial. Four k squared divided by four. Well, that's just k squared. 12k divided by four is just 3k. And then eight divided by four is just two. Okay. So here's another step now. I have a trinomial. I have a constant out here. Can I factor this even more? Oh dear. Well, now I have to start thinking about the relationship between the um, factors to get to two, and then if I add them together, I could get three. So I'm gonna list it over here. This is a, a bunch of different work. Well, the factors of two are really just two and one. <laughs> And two plus one is three, so I think we just answered it. So I have to write my four, I'm extracting my four. And it looks like these are both gonna be um, polyno uh, binomials. If you think about that, I'm adding a constant, adding them together. Okay. Okay, so I'm already seeing 
one two that goes into all of these terms. So I'm gonna extract my two, so put it over two, extract, put it parentheses, I'm gonna end up with a trinomial. I'm gonna end up with an x squared, I'm gonna end up with a negative four x. I'm gonna end up with a negative 12. So I'll close my parentheses. Now, can I factor this even more? Well, meaning, are there numbers that, remember, multiply, add to get that. So let's just list negative 12. I wanna play around with that first. Uh, I could think of one and 12. I could think of two and six. But, oh, two and six, I know there's a relationship and I can get four somehow, but I'm gonna have to subtract them. If I subtract them, I'm gonna end up um, with the negative sign winning. So I have to have the bigger factor as the negative sign. So extract x minus six, x plus two. Maybe I will get to 28, because then I still have to do the homework. Uh, I'm already looking to see, that I, I have a feeling that it's gonna be five. Looks like all these have, five goes into all of them. I also see they each have a y term. So that's gonna be my uh, greatest common factor. So I'm gonna extract my five y, and I'm gonna divide everything. So I have five x squared divided by five, 5x squared y divided by 5y, which leaves me with an x squared. I 15 minus 5 is 3. I, my y's cancel, I get an x. And then I have 140 divided by 5, which I know is 28. And the y's cancel each other out. So now I have a trinomial that now I can further factor. So I'm going to write my 28, my negative 28 over here. I'm gonna think about all the terms that go into 28 or two. I think that's 14, that's not gonna help me. I have seven and four. I think that's gonna work. And I think that the dark side is gonna win because it's a negative internal term. It's like it's inner turmoil. Maybe that's what I should call it. So I'm gonna make sure that my um, negative side is attached to my seven, if you think about it that way. So extract x minus seven, x plus four. Okay, so now let's, whew, let's do some of the homework. Um, and this is gonna, it's gonna be a lot of this kind of combined if you think about it. So if I, where can you see this? So homework seven, make that, should be able to see that. Okay. So again, I'm factoring each polynomial. So I am now looking for terms that multiply to this, add to get that. Six, one and six, and two and three. Oh, two plus three is five. I think I just got my answer. So I've got x plus two and x plus three. Two plus three is five, bingo. 30, let's think about my factors of 30s, one and 30, two and 15, three and 10. I'm looking for 11 here and I still don't have it. Four, no, it's not gonna work. Oh, five and six though. Oh yeah, and if I add them, sweet. Okay, no negative sign, so this is pretty straightforward. I've got a plus five, a plus six, okay. I have 56 over here, I, are seven and eight gonna work? No, mm, okay, I'm surprised. Well, I have one and six, I have two. Yes, who's gonna go in there? And that's me, three, okay. I have three, three is not gonna go in there, three, six, I have four, four goes in 14 times. Oh, that's pretty cool, okay. Oops. So I'm gonna pick four and 14 because I'm looking for um, that. If I add those together, I'm gonna get 18. So if I think about m plus 14, because they're both addition, and m plus four. Number four, I have, let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, so four, one and four, 
and two and two. I think that two and two is going to work. And there's all addition. So I'm just going to add those together. So I have W2, W plus two. And again, remember, I can rewrite that. I like to rewrite that as the square to make sure you remember. I have eight over here. I have one and eight. Oh, I think I just found it. That was quick because I'm trying to get to nine. We're adding them together. So I've got Y plus eight y plus 1, I've got 60, oh, it's probably 11, right? Because 66 likes 11 and 6, I, I bet it's that. 6 times 11, oh, and if I add them together is 17. So I've got k plus 11, k plus 6, okay. Let's see. Make sure I'm still, I'm still see it. Okay, I've got 8. I think it's already going to be 4 and 2, but is it going to be negative or positive? So I've got 4 and 2, and I've got to think about, hmm, two numbers when you multiply them together will get positive 8, but then I'm going to have a negative number. I think that means they're both going to have to be negative. addition sign in there if you think about it that way. Um, y minus 2, y minus 4. Let's see, does that make sense? My, negative 2y, negative 4y. Oh yeah, that's going to be negative 6y. And then 2 times 4, but they're both negative, is going to get me 8. Great. Okay, so let's go here. So 28, I already, I think and I already know that I've got a 4 and 7. I could list them all, but once you start getting used to it, you can kind of see what's going to win here. Um, for number 8, are they both, what is the sign going to be? I have to get a positive 28, but I have a negative internal term, so I, they're both going to be negative. So x minus 4, x minus 7. Number 9, I've got 90, and I'm looking for... Two numbers that are one away from each other, if you think about it, which I know are 9 and 10. And they, oh, it's going to be a negative 90. And I got the negative sign winning. So the larger integer, larger factor has to be negative. So now we have n minus 10, n plus 9. Okay. Let's see if we should maybe do one more odd. Let's do the 11 together, or together. <laughs> so if I have 70, it's negative. I have a positive internal. Okay, so it's going to be the difference. Okay, so I have, uh, I think it's probably going to be a, yeah, 10 times 7. Is, and then what side is going to win? Because I want a positive 3. So the larger term has to be positive. So this is going to give me x plus 10, x minus 7. Okay, let's go down to, uh, let's see, number 19. Okay, so I'm going to have to extract, extract, and then I'll see if there's more I can do. So if I look at this, I'm going to extract uh, 2 goes into all these terms. K is not in all of them, so it's just going to be 2. I'm going to extract my 2, put my 2 outside, divide, so i got 2. I'm dividing these terms. Now, can I factor this out? So then this is 2 steps. One, two. Okay, so I have 45. I'm going to write it over here and I'm going to start thinking. I'm going to get a negative 45 and I get a negative 4. I already know that 9 minus 5 is 4, so maybe I could play around with that. So if 9 times 5 is 45, I need a negative 9 to win, negative 4 rather, then negative 9 is going to win and I'm going to have a positive 5 because it's the difference. So then I'm going to have my extraction, I'm going to have my first 
factor, k minus 9, and I'm going to have my k plus 5 as my second factor. So this is, in essence, saying, well, what three things, when you multiply them together, equal that trinomial. So you're factoring it into three different pieces. Can we extract this? Oh, we can, but not with a number, not a coefficient, but I see that an x is in all of this stuff. So let's divide everything by x. Let's extract our x. And then I have two left over here. I have a linear here. And then I have, well, just 48 here. And then there's some there's another move I can make, and that is because I can do my fun little puzzle here. So I got negative 48. I've got maybe two numbers that are two away from each other in the factor world. And I know that 8 times 6 um, will get me 48. And, oh, but the positive side is going to win because the, so the bigger number has to be positive and the smaller number has to be negative. Extract binomial 1, x plus 8, binomial 2, x minus 6. Okay, we'll do one last one together. Let's go to 24. If I look at the 24, okay, Woof. so 5, because these are all multiples of 5, 5 is going to work. I see that m is in all of them too, so 5m is going to be a factor, it happens to be the greatest one, I'm going to extract that, and then I'm going to divide everything, so what I have left over is m squared plus 6 m minus 7, and the m's uh, become 1. Okay, now prime, we've got a prime number 7 here, so I think I already know where this is going, but 7 factors are 7 and prime times 1, and I'm going to end up with a positive 6. So I'm going to have the light side is winning, and the dark side is not. 5m, and then m plus 7, m minus 1. Okay. Oh, dear. Crash. Um, sorry, there. You can see that. Best of luck to you.